شعت شموس الهدي بالكلمات فأنارت الأفهام بالآيات أسرج بنور العلم عصما بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله سبحانه وتعالى سد ومن ورائهم برزخ إلى يوم يبعثون In this holy month of Ramadan, that month that one becomes closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seeks forgiveness, especially that this year was a quite difficult year for everyone during this pandemic. Many people lost loved ones, family and friends. So I thought of discussing the life after death and how will it be? What will we experience once we die? Who will we see and what will life be like? The first thing that happens after you die is that you will see the angel of death, Malik al Mot. You will see the shayateen on one side and you will see the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, and Imam Ali alayhi salam and all the infallible Imams. So you will see them all at once and the shayateen will be far away but they will try to trick you and drag you to disbelieve. So depending on your strength, of your faith, either Mankar and Nakir or Mubashir and Bashir will come to you. If you are a person who has committed many sins and is not faithful, then you will see Mankar and Nakir. On the other hand, if you are a faithful person and you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your Iman is strong, you will see Mubashir and Bashir. If you have faithfully visited the graves of the Imams, especially the grave of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, it is narrated that the angels will do tashi' on your soul. Then the Prophet Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him and Imam Ali alayhi salam will approach you to soothe your death. The two angels will begin to question you. Who is your God? Who, what is your religion? Who is your prophet? Who are your Imams? And depending on your knowledge, your grave will either be a hole of heaven or a hole of hell. Then you will enter the world of Barzakh and remain there until the day of judgment. In the life of Barzakh, what will you see? Who will you see? Number one, you will be reunited with your family and friends and relatives who passed away before you. Your father who passed away before you, your mother, your siblings, anyone, family, friends, relatives, you will see them there. Who else will you see there? You will see the Ahlul Bayt You will get the opportunity, if you are a believer and a true believer, you will get the opportunity to dine with them and converse and have a conversation with them. Many wonder and ask, how will I know the time of my death? The answer is that no one is given a time. No one knows when you will die. Even the angel of death who does his job does not know when you will die. When the time is right, the angel of death will receive a message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanding him to take the person's soul. So even the angel of death does not know when you will die. He gets a sudden message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to come and take your soul. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the angel of death two jobs. The first job is to take people's souls and end their life. And the second job is to watch people during five times a day, during their prayer times. He watches you whether you're praying, you're taking your salah seriously, or you're playing during the salah time. And the angel of death will watch you and he will keep it in his heart. So he has two jobs. And an interesting narration from Ahlul Bayt they state that the gatherings that happen and there's people talking and then there's a sudden silence, that sudden silence, they say that the angel of death have passed. After the angel of death has fulfilled his duties and taken every soul on earth, including the souls of the angels, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take his soul and remain the only one to exist. Now, why, one might ask, how does the angel of death really look like? And how will he appear when he comes to take our souls? 
Narrations state that every one of us sees him differently depending on their faith and deeds. If one is a good person, then he will appear very handsome and he will make them, he will make that individual feel happy and satisfied. However, if one has committed many sins and, and their faith is shaken, he will appear in a terrifying, scary look on his face. And the narrations say that some feel that the worst time of their life is when they see the death of angels, while others, it will be the best moment of their lifetime. So it depends on you. Narrations also state that those who cry on Imam Hussein salam and serve him humbly in this world, Rasulullah, peace and blessings be upon him, will tell the angels of death to be easy on him. To a point where he, the angel of death will treat you the way a mother treats her child. Meaning he will be very easy on you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's so merciful. He has put the stage of life for us to be punished so that our sins can be erased. While we're dying, the step that we're going through, it all makes our sins erase. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will erase our sins in many places. In this life, He tests us through calamities and illnesses. And at the time of our death, at the time where we see the death of angel, and in our barzakh, and on the day of judgment. Until you reach heaven, sinless. If you want a painful afterlife, work to remain sinless. You want a smooth death, remain sinless. You want to have an easy day of judgment, and remain, then remain sinless. It all depends on you. How you will die, what you will see in Alam al-Barzakh, it all remains on you. Once one has died and sees the angel of death, and the shayateen, the narrations say at this point, the shayateen work the hardest to trick people in disbelieving. If a person has a strong faith in this world, then the shaytan cannot work on them to make them disbelieve because their iman is so strong. But if your iman isn't strong in this world, it's shaken, by the time you're dying, the shaytan can call you. Some narrations state that if one dies with a, committing a big sin, but he lived all his life avoiding sins, for example, but one day that person did a big sin, for example, putting music in a car and suddenly had a car accident. This person is known, this sin is known min al-kaba'ir, the biggest sins. The Imam says, يَمُوتُ عَلَى الْإِسْلَامِ وَلَا يَمُوتُ عَلَى الْإِيمَانِ They die in their religion, they're Muslim, but they won't die on faith. So it is very important to keep track from what we are committing daily, to track our sins, avoid committing the big sins, and don't view the small sins as their small sins, because we will see them in the hereafter. Those small sins that we assume that Allah won't punish us for that, what will happen to us when we would die? We will see all those sins. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test us while we're dying. We will go through hard, painful moments. The best of the believer is that those people who are believing in Ahlul Bayt and they're very sinless, when you die and you're on your deathbed, you see Ahlul Bayt They come to you, all the Imams, all the Ahlul Bayt And then you see the shayateen, but they're far away. They try to misguide you. They appear before your soul has been taken. So that's in the world. You're still in the world. You're on your deathbed. You see the angel of death coming, and then you see the shayateen, and then you see Ahlul Bayt Have you not heard that some people, when they're on their deathbed, they drop tears from their eyes? The Imam says, لَقَدْ رَآهُ Allah. They saw him. Who is he? The Imam Ali salam. They see Ahlul Bayt, so they tear. Imam Sadiq salam said that this is mentioned in the Quran, in the holy book of Allah but we don't understand it. Where does it say it in the book of Allah? Those who believe, 
and were fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is for them a glad tidings in the present life and in the everlasting life. The glad tidings are seeing Ahlul Bayt والسلام, before your soul has been departing from this world. Right before the angel of death comes to take one's life, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, and the Ahlul Bayt والسلام, will look at you and will tell you. They will point to the skies and they will show you your place in the heavens. And this is the Bushra in this world. وَلَهُمْ الْبُشْرَى فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا The believers. Once you see Ahlul Bayt, they give you the glad tidings in this world. They will tell you, view your place in the heaven. And you will view it. That's the Bushra. Some people, Ahlul Bayt, look at them and they smile. And others, if they were very sinful, Ahlul Bayt والسلام, will turn their faces. Meaning that they're very disappointed from them. You will still see them, but they will be disappointed. The narrations say that those people who are smiled at, who are they? If an individual is a non-believer and a sinner or shows hate towards the lovers of Ahlul Bayt, they will see Rasulullah, they will see Imam Ali alayhi salam, but they will avoid them. The Imam will turn their face away from them. But if not, the Imams will smile to you. Now one thing I did not mention earlier is that when the angel of death comes to take one's soul, he will bring two leaves from the heavens. One, and those leaves you have to smell them. He will make you smell the sense of them. One is named Al-Munsiya and the other is named al muskhiya If one is given the Munsiya, then they will forget their family, they will forget their wealth, their belongings, they will forget everything behind them. Therefore, the shaitan here cannot play a role, will not be successful in dragging them to disbelieving in Allah. If one is given the muskhiya, they will forget everything and focus only on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's the second leaf that they smell. So the first one, you'll forget your, your belongings, everything in the world, your family. And the second one, you'll focus to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. During that time, Rasulullah, peace and blessings be upon him, and Imam Ali alayhi salam will point to the skies and show you your place in heavens. At the sight of the heavens, the soul will leave the body. The Imam alayhi salam, they say that the moment the soul is taken, it will be the best time of a, of a good person's life and the worst time of the bad person's life. So it depends on your a'mal, your deeds. By the way, what I'm discussing in this episode only applies to the believers, to the mu'mineen. As for the disbelievers, of course, their death will be completely different, which I will not mention in this episode. Many people tend to fear death, and they're scared of death, because they constantly hear the bad things that happen when you will die. They hear just the bad things, but in fact, it all depends on that person. It all depends on you. It is it all in your hand to choose the correct path to die peacefully and happy and sinless, or you choose the bad path. Some people are afraid of to suffer from death. Now, after all this that I discussed is what happens to the moment that you are dying. Then what happens after you're dead? So after your soul leaves your body, what is the relationship between the body and the soul after it's been taken? The first thing that happens is that once the soul leaves the body, the body is washed, which we all know is ghusl, performed, and then tashi' takes place. Then the body is put into the grave. And the soul returns back to the body. So your soul was out, but once you're put back to the grave, your soul is put back to the body. One interesting fact, my dear viewers, is that if you, for those who visited Imam Hussein alayhi salam's grave, and not physically, but also from far, 4,000 angels will stand beside your soul during your tashi until your body is put into the grave. How amazing is that? 4,000 angels will be with you in the tashi' so that your, your soul, and along with your soul, there's 4,000 angels. After that, you're put in your grave. What happens next? 
the ground will talk to you and will say marhaban bika ya waliyallah inni kuntu ahabbu mithluka yamshi alay welcome O oh, you believer of Allah, as I used to enjoy someone like you walk on top of me. And because of the good deeds that you have, the earth will expand. So your grave won't stay one meter, it will expand. It will be very big and wide. On the other hand, if one has many bad deeds and is a non-believer, then the ground will say, La ahlan. You're not welcomed as I hated someone like you to walk on top of me. Oh, you disbeliever. The ground will squeeze the body in the grave and make it smaller than that one meter. However, even this discomfortable is also beneficial for us, done by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to wipe away our sins. So don't fear death and keep this in mind that even though you may have committed some sins, we still have time to ask for forgiveness. We're still in this world today. And this is why there's this month of Ramadan to remind us of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah will erase our sins in, in this holy month, especially in Laylat al-Qadr. Now when the grave expands, what will you see? You will see beautiful views that appear in all five sides. One of the views is so beautiful and stunning that it, it's different from all the other rest of the views. So you'll have from five sides, you will see different viewings. And those views will speak to each other. One of them will say to another, who are you? The other one will pry, I am the Salah. The other one will say, who are you? They will say, I am the Hajj, I am the Zakat. So it depends how your amal are, how your deeds are, you will see them. And the other one will say, I am the salah, I am the prayer, I am the zakat. Now keep in mind that some of the people, they, they have the bas salah, they fast very well, they dress modest, but those people might have cut relationship with their brother and sister, the Muslim brother and sisters, and they have bad akhlaq. All this, you will see it. It will all show up. So keep in mind, it's not just about your salah. It's not just about your amal. It's also about your akhlaq, your manners. If you cut the relationship with people, with your brother and sister, the Muslims in Islam, all this, you will view it. Anyways, those views speak to each other. And the beautiful one of them, they will ask her, who are you? And they will hear a voice replying, I am the allegiance to Muhammad and his holy household. I am your wilaya." Ahlul Bayt. If one does not have the wilaya and the allegiance to Ahlul Bayt والسلام, but prays and does everything, they will not see this beautiful view. They will see it horribly. And that view will be the best viewing of all. All this that I'm describing will only happen to two people. من محض الإيمان ومن محض الكفر. So all the stage that you're going through, it's, the, it's for the people who are the believers or the non-believers. Man mahad al-Iman are those who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and commit good deeds. Woman mahad al-Kufr are those who see the truth of Islam and the right path of Ahlul Bayt but choose not to follow. Only those two people will see what I'm explaining right now. The rest will remain in graves and not experience a thing. Ila until the day of judgment where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put them to full punishment. But those who believe, we go through steps so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a chance to erase some of their sins. Now what happens next? You saw those six views who are the eight. Who, now what happens next? You saw the views. Now the angels enter your grave. And as I mentioned earlier, that either it's Mankar and Nakir or Mubashir and Bashir. So once they leave, they question you and they leave. What happens next? Ahlul Bayt come in. They will come to you in every stage of your life. You're a follower of Ahlul Bayt, they will come in. To rescue you. The narration state that Rasulullah, peace and blessings be upon him, will stand on top of their heads and Imam Ali will stand in front of them and they will speak to them 
everyone will say something differently. Rasulullah will say, are you not the one who loves me and believes in me? Am I not the one who you used to love? I'm here to help you. Imam Ali السلام, will say, are you not the one who believed in me and defended me and cried over me? I am here to rescue you. If we take just one minute of our life to imagine what I'm actually saying, we would adore death. Who does not adore to see the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him? Who does not adore to see Imam Ali السلام, Only those who are sinful. At this stage, the deceased enters their world of barzakh, where the life where it will be a life with no punishment, no anaconda, no biting. Your body will be very happy. There's no rats, no one, like, you're in a beautiful life after all that that's happened to you. You're in the next world. You're in Alam Al Barzakh. That's for the believers. With the exception of Lakhtat Al Qabr. Al Qabr, the squeezing of the grave, which is basically. It's not escaped only by a few who can escape this. And it's all due to the a'mal. Now let's conclude with dhakhtat al-qabr. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, when he heard that one has been squeezed in their grave, he would say, oh God forbid. Very a few of people will escape this stage. Now there is a'mal that you can do to release from this dhakhtat al-qabr. Now narrations don't mention what will happen exactly during that stage when there is dhakhtat al-qabr, when your, your body has been squeezed. But they mention that the imams, alayhim salatu salam, they mention that when, some, when they hear someone being squeezed in their grave, they tear. Ahlul bayt, they tear. They, they say that's very painful. It's a very painful stage that we enter, but all this is still beneficial for us. Allah does this to wipe our sins. We are sinful. Now keep note that if you have sins, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. Allah will forgive you. If you have a sin that's recorded on you, make use of this month of Ramadan to ask for forgiveness and stop from committing the same sin that you've been committing daily. Many of us commit the same sins daily and it becomes a habit, but it's never too late. It's all in our hands. Now this is part one of what happens to you in the life of Barzakh and what will happen to you while you are dying. Stay tuned for the next episode where I will go into more detail of what will happen to you in the world of Barzakh and what you will see there. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina wa Nabina Muhammadin wa ala ali bayti tayyibin al-tahirin.